Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate prorated rent or bills or whatever else you have to prorate in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Elena in Phoenix, Arizona, one of my gold members. Elena says, I run an apartment complex. We get a lot of tenants moving in or out on days that are not the first of the month. How can I calculate their prorated rent due? Well, Elena, this is going to be one of those videos where I'm going to tell you to go watch a couple other videos first. And then based on the knowledge you get from that video, those videos, then you could put the Legos together in a different way to calculate the number that you need. So go watch this video first. This video teaches you how to calculate the first day of the month, and it also teaches you how to calculate the first day of the next month following any date. So if, for example, someone's moving in on December 4th, you have to figure out what the last day of that month is. So you need December 31st, so you need to figure out the first day of the following month so you can figure out what the how many days this month has. So go watch this video first. And this video has a couple of other videos you might need to watch first too. Calculated fields, how date serial works, year, month, and day functions, and ISO dates. So go watch all of these. If you're not familiar with any of this stuff first, then come on back. And also watch my video on rounding numbers. It's real simple. Those are all free videos on my website, on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below. You can click on them and go watch them. So go watch them. Come on back. This is my Tech Help free template. This is also a database you can grab off my website if you want to. But I'm going to use it because I've got a customer table, and my customer table has a whole bunch of dates in here. Where are they? Where are those dates? Uh, oh, right here. Customer sense. We're just going to use these, and we'll pretend those dates are their move-in dates, right? So let's go make a query. Create. Query design. I'm going to bring in that customer table with all those move in dates or move out dates, whichever you prefer. Now, there are four different ways that I can think of to calculate prorated rent or whatever. The first is the number of days in a banker's month, 30. So, for example, if someone is moving in on the 20th, they got to pay 10 days worth of rent. You just take the, the rent, divide it by 30, multiply it by 10. It's the simplest way to do it. You don't have to know how many days are in a particular month to calculate that. That's easy. You could figure that out based on the rest of the stuff I'm going to teach you. So if that's the method that you use, it's real easy. The next way is to use the number of days in the average month. If you take the total number of days divided by 12 in a year, you get 30.4162 or 30.42 is what I see a lot of. That's the easy, another easy way to do it. And that, that way you don't get screwed if you're dealing with February versus January. Right? One's only got 28 days, so each day is more expensive. Another way is to do it based on the total days of the year. Again, again 365 or 366, it depends on if it's a leap year or not. Um, I've got a video coming out probably tomorrow or the next day that's going to show you how to calculate a leap year. It's not that hard. Someone else asked me how to do that, so look for tomorrow's video. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link to it down below, even though it's not finished yet. Um, but I'm going to show you this one, which is the most popular, the most common way to prorate something. You have to figure out how many days are in the current month, and then you divide up the rent by those. So if you're moving in in January, each day is going to be less expensive than if you're moving in in February. That's how most places that I've seen prorate rents and stuff like that. And this is actually the hardest method to calculate. So if you can do this one, you can very easily do the other ones. All right, back to the database. Okay, so let's find that customer sense field. And I don't want to keep calling it customer sense. That's my move-in date. All right, so I'm just going to call it D, like that, D colon. That's called an alias. I've now, I've now referenced customer sense as D, so I can call it D everywhere else. Okay. Now I've got to find the first day of next month. So I know how many days are left in this month, so I know what to use for my calculation. And since you watched my first day of the month video, you know you could find the first day of next month with that formula right there. I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it right there. Paste. I zoomed in, Shift F2. First day of next month. And there you go. There's your formula. Now, if I run it, 
there's my D, there's my move-in date, and there's the first day of next month. And these are all old dates, so let's make this one popular. Let's make or current. Let's go 2022-12-6. Dash, uh, dash That's today's date. So the first day of next month is January 1st, 2023. Now that I know what the first day of next month is, I can easily calculate how many days are in this month by taking this and subtracting that. Because remember, in Access, dates have a value of one for a day, right? So if you go from January 1st, January 2nd, that's basically adding one to it. So if I subtract this date from this date, remember larger dates are in the future, that'll give me the number of days between them. So back to design view. All right, right here, I'm gonna zoom in, Shift F2. All right, the days left in month is going to be the first day of next month minus D, my original date. Hit OK, run it. Now you can see how many days are left in the current month that you're in. Okay, so if I change this to 1230, there are two months that you're liable for the rent, right? The 30th, if you're moving on the 30th, you gotta pay for the 30th and the 31st. Okay, see how that works? Here's one that's February 1st. You gotta pay 28 days. All right, 2003 is not a leap year. Okay, so that number is correct. That's the number of days that you are responsible for the rent. Now, here's the tricky part. In order to know how much each day is worth, we have to know how many m days are in that month. So we, we got to know if it's, if it's you know, February, it's you got 28 days, so you divide the rent by 28. If it's January, you divide by 31. But you got leap years in there too. Okay, so what we're going to do is to figure out what the last day of this month is, which will give us the number of days are in that month, we're going to subtract one from that date. See what I'm saying? So this is the first day of the following month. If we subtract one from it, then we get the last day of the current month, and then we can pull its day value out, right? So this will return a 31. This will return a 28. Or 29 if this happened to be like 2004, I think, right? Yeah, because 2000 was supposed to be a leap year, but it wasn't because it's divisible by 100, but it's also divisible by 400, so uh, 2000 was a weird year. Okay, so back to design view. Zoom in. Okay, so the days in month, in the current month, are going to be take the first day of next month and subtract one from it, then we're gonna take the day value of that. All right, so the first day of next month right here, let's say is January 1st of next year, subtract one from it, now we're back to December 31st of this year, and now I'll take the day of that, remember you got day, month, year, right? The day value is gonna be 31, the value of the day. Hit okay, let's see what it looks like. Look at that. There's all our day values. Now we know what to divide the rent by to get a value per day. You with me? Everybody with me so far? This is the one that you could just substitute a 34 or a 30.4167 if you're using the, the, the average month. Okay, if you're using banker's months, you could just put a 30 in here. But that's the tough one to calculate. That's the one that, that trips everybody up is how do you know how many days are in this month? Okay, now what's the rent? Well, we could just throw it in the query if it's the same for everybody. If not, you could make a field in your customer table called rent and pull that in here, but I'll just make it rent, let's say it's $2,000, okay? If you're up in Buffalo, New York, where I, I spent most of my life and I grew up, then you're getting a five bedroom house, three bathrooms, full size yard, all that. Uh, if you're down here in Southwest Florida where I live, it's a one bedroom shack. So <laughs> rents are definitely higher down here, <laughs> okay? There's your rent. Again, that can be a field out of the database if it's different for everybody, but we'll just say it's the same for everyone. doesn't matter for this example. Okay, now, I know what the rent is. I know how many days are in each month. Now I can calculate what each day is worth. Okay, so right here, zoom in again. Each day worth is going to be the rent divided by the number of days in 
a month. Right? Hit OK. Run it. And there you go. The, the little pound symbols, that just means that the field's not wide enough. You can round this if you want to. I don't recommend it. In this particular case, I would let the rounding go to the end of the calculation. We're going to round it in the next step. Because all these little fractions of a penny do add up, right? If they owe you, you know, 28 days and you got an eighth of a cent right there, yeah, that's going to add up after, you know, 0 0.8 times 28, you know, you're going to lose a few few cents of rent there, which, oh, no, <laughs> don't do that, right? <laughs> no, but then we end up with, the, you know, the Superman 3 problem, the office space problem, and you end up in the federal prison and all that stuff for stealing money and burn down the building and Okay, anyways, so now we got one step left. All right, we know what the rent is. We know what each day is worth. Notice how they're all slightly different, right? 31-day months, each day is only worth $64. But February, 28 days, each day is worth $71. Okay, so now we can multiply what each day is worth times the number of days left in the month that you are responsible for, and that will come up with how much you owe for prorated rent for this month final column ready pro rated and it is one word by the way i googled it i always thought it was like at least hyphenated but it's not it's one word pro rated rent due is going to be we're going to round this one round each day worth times days left in month comma two we're going to round to two decimal places, or in other words, pennies, and there is your prorated rent due. For each person, based on how many days are in that month, based on how many days are left in that month, we then get the total days worth, and that's what you owe. And you can see right here, this person, anybody that moves in on the 1st, this person moved in on November 1st, owes 30 days, and it should be equal to whatever the rent is. Should be. <laughs> if your math is right. <laughs> and just looking down the list, uh, yeah, everybody's okay. Let's change this to like the 15th. Let's see what happens there. Not slightly off. Let's change it to the 16th. Let's see. 16th. Perfect. A thousand. Yeah, because because 15 would be the in the first half of the month. 16 to 30 would be the second half of the month. So that makes more sense. Okay. And yeah, like I said, if you're using the other methods, banker's month, um, the average month, you just will uh, substitute this. You won't need the 28, 30, 31 number there. You just put all 30s in that column, and then these numbers will all come out the same. And um, if you are if you care about the, the leap years, look for my leap year video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Again, it's not ready yet, but it'll be probably ready soon, within the next day or two. That's next on my list. Probably record it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. And so there's your fast tip for today. See how a lot of these questions that I get are just things that I've already showed you in other videos how to do all of these things. Nothing in today's video really was, was new. It's just taking the Legos and putting them together in different ways and me showing you how to, you know, take bits and pieces from this lesson and put it with that lesson and put them together and shake it all up and do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. And there you go. So if you have any other questions like this, send them in. And, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got to advertise some of my other courses here. Um, uh, Access Expert 27, 28, my daytime seminar, if you want to learn a lot more about uh, dates and times and stuff like that. And, you know, in my full courses, we take a lot more time and go over stuff in more detail. And we sit around the fire and we sing Kumbaya and all that good stuff. So it, it, it's, a, it's a good time. Um, yeah, so that's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you out. And uh, we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar 
Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.